happy September 13th, City Collective. I hope that you're doing well. We got hubs happening today, and of course, we're here online, so there's lots to look forward to. Um, I just wanna give you a quick idea of what's gonna be happening for our morning service, and then I'll have some announcements for you at the very end. Today, we're gonna have a little bit of time of worship. Uh, we're gonna be beginning a new series called Ravens and Roses right after that, as we uh, dive into the story of King Saul. I'm really excited about it. I think it's gonna be a, an important series for us as a church, leading into a, a important fall for us. Uh, we're figuring things out, and so we've got some announcements that I'll have ready to go for you at the end of service. So if you are ready to go, if you're feeling like you have everything around you, you got a cup of water, you got some of the some your favorite people alongside of you. Would you do me a favor? Would you lean in this morning? Would you have this posture that would be open to what God could be saying to you and leading you towards? Uh, if, if you are new to our gatherings, just know that you're so welcome, that this is a safe place for you, that you can ask questions of, of God and of faith and, and feel like this is a space that you can discover who God is, that that's such a high value for us here at City Collective. And so wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, know that you're welcome. This is a great time to be here. Uh, we're gonna have a great morning together uh, and let's get ready to worship. Yeah. 
head that once was crowned with thorns is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet, and now at His feet we bow. The one who wore our sin and shame, now robed in majesty, the radiance of perfect love, now shines for all to
City Collective, thanks for joining us this morning. We have uh, hubs happening and are, of course, here online, one church meeting in different spaces, and it's a wonderful thing, but thanks for joining us. We're really excited for a great Sunday morning together. I hope it's been a blessing to you already. Um, there are going to be some key dates that I'm going to relay to you at the end of the service, but know that we are creatively preparing for the fall on how we will be continuing forward as a church. You're going to have an opportunity to jump on in and be able to uh, engage with us here at City Collective. Now, before I continue, I want to make a quick shout out to all of our teachers, students, support staff, and parents. Many of our community are involved in some manner and are navigating the beginning of a brand new school year. And I have heard so much positivity and courage and unity in the midst of so much uncertainty. Uh, know that we're praying for you, for strength and, to, and peace to flood your homes and your schools. Uh, and if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed or you just want to pray with someone, please do not hesitate to email our team at pray at citycollective.com. And I know that we would love to be a support to you. We love you. We're cheering you on. It's going to be a great start to the, the school, year, school year for you all. Now, perhaps you've noticed that some of the new branding we've got rolling out this morning is indicating the start of a new series. We're, we're starting a new four-week series today called Ravens and Roses, and it's going to be dealing with what I feel is a really important issue for us, a uh, topic for us to consider during the season, the ideas of loss, of grief, and when things don't go according to plan. And as we're preparing for the fall, this is a theme that came to the forefront because loss is a theme that humanity has always wrestled with. Um, in Ed Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven, this story that he presents is very popular because it encapsulates the feeling of despair from losing something very close to you. People can relate to this story because it allows the readers to follow a character through that feeling of loss, possibly loss that they are going through themselves. Because the reality is that loss is a constant it's an inevitability in our lives. And yet, if there is an inevitability that we are least prepared for, it is this. And 2020 has not just highlighted the reality of loss, rather it has catalyzed it to a numbing certainty. There has not been a single area of our lives which has not been impacted. A loss of relationship, of routine, of opportunity, of stability, of jobs, of a loss of life, a loss of hope, loss of vision, loss of community. We've all experienced it. And maybe you're hearing these things and putting check marks beside them because you're, you're grieving and you're figuring out what to do with those moments that didn't go according to plan. And even if you are coming out of the summer season feeling like you actually are feeling pretty good, that you benefited in some ways this past season, I think we all know someone who has experienced loss. Loss is something that has come to the forefront during the past six months of this pandemic. How do we respond? How do we proceed? How, what does the Bible have to say about it? And how is it impacting my life right now? These are questions that I believe are worth wrestling with as a community. So for the next four weeks, we are going to be dealing with different types of loss and grief. Um, different types of loss and grief that we experience uh, as individuals, as a community. And some are obvious, others maybe not so much, but all are impactful. And today, as we begin, we're going to be looking in particular at the life of King Saul, looking at the loss of expected success, of identity, and ultimately vision. 
Now, this is something that we talked about at Church in the Park, one of the subtle but crippling things that this pandemic has robbed us of is vision. And right here at the beginning of what is often the true New Year, let's be honest, January doesn't always feel the way we might celebrate, but September is actually the new beginnings. And for many of us, we need to make sure we get our vision right. And now this isn't sight I'm talking about. Sight is what you see with your eyes open. Vision is what you see with your eyes closed. And there are things that God wants to show you that nothing around you looks like right now. We need vision. Now, before we read this passage, let me give you a little background on our man, Saul, who would be the first king of Israel, not to be confused with Paul of the New Testament. Uh, He came to power after a a bloody and tumultuous period in Israel's history. Uh, The people were governed by by various tribal chieftains, and they were called judges. Um, An account of this period can be found in the book of Judges, which tracks the progressive moral corruption of the Israelites and and their leaders, in particular after the death of Joshua. So the Israelites, they move into the promised land and Joshua is their leader and then things don't go according to plan. And with no centralized government and 200 years of poor leadership, this was a period of political and social upheaval. The Israelite people were looking for a savior who could end the strife that had marred their nation landscape for generations. They needed a king. And in comes Saul, who would be anointed king of Israel as God honored the request of the people. And then in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Then Samuel, who was a prophet in Israel, took a flask of of olive oil and he poured it on Saul's head and kissed him saying, has not the Lord anointed you ruler over his inheritance? When he and his servant arrived at Gibba, a procession of prophets met him. The spirit of God came powerfully upon him and he joined in their prophesying. What a introduction to the people. Our man Saul is prophesying. He's got power of God upon him. Man, God is working in him and through him. He sees the king, the keys of the kingdom given to him and a clear agenda of where he was going to lead them. Now, now, if I was to say a man in the Bible was anointed to be king, was, was a little bit hesitant over his appointment, was obedient to his father, and he carried concern over his interests, and he found initial success, whom would you think of? Well, I know my mind goes to who would be ultimately Saul's successor in David, a man that the Bible would call after God's own heart, not Saul. But yet these initial circumstances were just as true for Saul as they were for David. King Saul had a clear call from God and all the factors in place that would seem to indicate that he would be a great king. But the truth was that Saul was not a great king. Nor was he even really presented to us as a good man. He was deeply flawed. And the entire first half of Samuel is dedicated to a character study about about its failures. Somewhere along the journey, that initial call of God, that experience of God was where he was lead and where he was leading Saul was lost. Vision was lost. And in turn, he was no longer pursuing the things of God in his life. He was pursuing the things for himself. And just five chapters later, this is evidence that things have come full circle in a short period of time. It says, then the word of the Lord came to Samuel. I regret that I have made Saul king because he has turned away from me and has not carried out my instructions. Samuel then was angry and he cried out to the Lord all that night. Talk about a quick turnaround. He was no longer carrying out God's instructions. He had lost the vision for the people of Israel that that was given to him. And to lose it was was simply more than forgetting about it. It indicated that he never really valued it, that he devalued it, in fact. And we get that. That could be really starting out strong with the vision for your business, for your marriage. But what happened five years in, the vision sometimes get out of focus. And when vision gets out of focus, life starts happening to you and you stop happening to life. So my question for you this morning, have you ever lost something and stopped 
looking for it. Like some, like you're sitting on, on one of those big comfy couches and, and you've got some change in the back pocket and it falls out, but you barely even notice because it didn't even actually hold that much value. So you're not gonna go digging into that, cha- that couch. You don't know what's in that couch. So you let, let it go away and you forget about it. And this is a way of that vision sometimes operates as, as well in our life. If what you perceive as the vision for your life doesn't actually carry real value to you, then it is easily discarded. It is easily forgotten. Heck, when it is lost, it isn't even missed. But like I said earlier, we need vision. Do you believe that vision is valuable? Because the Bible says it is. And the reason my vision is valuable is because without a vision, people perish. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Now let me unpack that scripture for you. The the writer says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And it's not saying money, it's not saying power, it's not saying influence, it's saying vision. And in particular, it's because of what it says next, that it says when we lose vision, that we cast off restraint, aka people stop caring when there is no vision. That's why when you first get that vision of of that business or that marriage or that friendship in your life, in that courting stage of of the relationship development, you're super intentional plans and gifts and man you are making sure you're listening and you have a vision of where it's going but when you lose that vision do you still feel like you're pursuing it are you aware of it do you actually hold value in the vision that god has given you for your life even though it might not have completely come to pass vision is something that we need in the pursuit of the next day that we are given by an almighty god and what i want to do is through the lens of king saul's life i want to look at the ways in which vision is lost and the manners in which it can be found. In in essence, Saul's root character flaw is is self-exaltation and self-deception. He thinks he knows better than everyone else, including God. For for example, in in 1 Samuel 13, he was told to wait for Samuel before offering sacrifices to God and and initiating a battle with the Philistines. But he didn't listen, however, and he bulldozed ahead impatiently. And even though he eventually wins the battle, he did it on his own terms instead of God's, a point that he never seems to really grasp. He had a vision that he had a better idea for his life than what God had already given him. And in in a long series of stories in Saul's life, we see that vision is lost because of a variety of factors. I want you to take note of this. Vision is lost because of fear and disappointment. Vision is lost because of monotony, and vision is lost because of impatience. And all three, they they really do work hand in hand. Fear couples with each of them. Um, Have you ever seen one of those Jimmy Fallon sketches where they have a box with something in it? And they bring famous people to put their hand in through the top, and they don't don't see what's actually there, and they have to guess what it is. And uh, they'll often pick items with like a weird texture or, or maybe that are alive or, or even worse, that someone's face and they're feeling all over it. And if they were able to see what was in the box, it would make the process of reaching in and touching it so much easier. But fear builds up and keeping their hand out ends up sounding more appealing than what it is. But what if it was actually something of value inside? They don't know because they're not trusted because they can't see it. And when we can't exactly see where we're going, it's often a daunting task to take that first step. Or even if there is a vision far ahead, when you don't see it coming to your life immediately or directly in front of you, fear and disappointment can be a quick lever that we pull for ourselves. And and monotony seems more and more appealing rather than stepping into that unknown. Vision so easily gets out of focus when monotony is deemed acceptable. But this is what I've discovered and what we see in the life of Saul. Vision is lost when our decision is decision making is driven by fear. And monotony and fear are our unlikely bedfellows that actually really do, they play off of each other. Fear says that could really hurt you. You better not try something new. Monotony says trying something will probably hurt. You better stay safe with what you know. And, and Saul, he saw fear sabotage a potentially great opportunity 
There's this one story of Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verses 10 to 12, where it says that the next day an ugly mood kind of fell upon Saul and he became quite beside himself. He, he was raving. And, and he calls this uh, shepherd boy, David, to come play his harp as he usually did at times. It would always calm Saul down. Saul, instead, though, he had a spear in his hand and he threw the spear thinking, I'll nail David to the wall. David ducked and the spear missed and this happened twice. Now, Saul feared David and it was clear that God was with David and had left Saul. He's thinking to himself, this kid is going to usurp me. I should kill him because I don't want to lose my throne. This kid has the, but this kid also had the ability to bring him peace. And he should have embraced him and see, seen how they could possibly build this kingdom together. When we are crippled by this feeling of fear, monotony, and just trying to maintain the moment is what we end up pursuing instead of pursuing what God might have actually presented to us as an opportunity. When I think about the idea of vision being lost to monotony, my mind is drawn to the story of Simba, middle of Lion King, Timon and Pumbaa show up on the scene and they start singing Hakuna Matata. It means no worries for the rest of your days. It means that you can just enjoy the moment, be present, don't worry about what's coming up ahead. And instead, they're saying that you just got to enjoy what is here in the moment. And sure, there's, there's an element of being content in life, but when we start only being present, present in the moment and not thinking about what God has presented for us for the future, we're going to miss out on what God is offering us. We're going to miss out on the, on the vision that God once gave us, that he was meant to be a king, that he was meant to lead the, lead the tribe that he was a part of. And there was so much more to his story than simply having no worries. And monotony can be something that just overwhelms our life to the point that vision is lost Purpose is lost. Passion is lost. And sometimes we need someone to remind us of that vision that was once given to us. Circling back to Proverbs 29, verse 18, where it says, Where there is no vision, no revelation of God and His, and His word, the people are unrestrained. That we, we stop caring. We are designed to do more than simply live in the moment, but to actually be a people who carry hope forward. Vision is so important. And I think the loss of vision is one of the most subtle ways that, that who you are and who you are designed to be gets interrupted. Lost vision can look like the devaluing of it. It can look like the abandonment of it. And when we begin uh, to see things without vision, we often... We, we stop pursuing the passions that God has placed, placed inside of us. And that's definitely the case for Saul. Saul, he, he, he needed a revision of his life that maybe he lost it once, but God hadn't given up on him, but he was trying to pursue what was and, and he became impatient in his story. Saul began to do things outside of the will of God. He began to pursue things out of his own personal agenda, out of his own selfish nature. And when impatient becomes a priority, present satisfaction becomes our preference over future fulfillment. But vision is often found in the waiting. Sometimes we come to the conclusion that vision is no longer necessary because what I'm carrying right now is all consuming enough. I, I don't think I have space in my life to actually think ahead or believe beyond the moment. And the posture of a life without vision becomes more than a momentary escape, but it instead it becomes a new approach to existing. But God has so much more for us than what we are currently seeing in our lives right now. Are we pausing? Are we listening? Are we entering into that space of waiting? And one of the things that we need to hold on to in our lives is a reminder that we are not alone. City Collective, you are not alone. Sure, when you feel like something is lost, you want to batten down the hatches and keep everyone else out. You're not alone in that. That, that is exactly what Edgar Allan Poe is saying when he writes, leave my loneliness unbroken. He's saying, don't bother me, leave me alone, go away, I don't want your company. But that is the lie of loss. That is, that is a cross 
that, that, that it's saying that it's a cross that you need to bear alone, that your grief over that loss, no one's going to understand it. That vision which was lost was embarrassing anyways. No, we need each other and we need to trust that when loss takes place, I don't check out, but I do check in. I get myself to a hub and I ask someone to be praying with me. I message our prayer team about a step of faith that, that you're taking towards a vision that God has given you, even though it doesn't make perfect sense and you don't see how it all is going to come together, but you want someone to lean in with you. I don't isolate. I rather invite those who are in my corner to actually join me in the fight to pray, to believe, to remind, to encourage. And I think one of the greatest reasons for the fatal nature of loss in Saul's life was his inability to be aware of, of the path he was going down. He had lost the vision and the biggest tragedy is that he was not even aware of it. The story shows he is completely blind to his arrogance and he always believes that he's in the right. Sure, he saw the vision from God at first, but as his story progresses, the mistakes, they get bigger and the stakes, they get higher. Somehow, he is never able to own what wrong he has done when it's pointed out to him. Would we be a people? with an openness to community, to listen, to learn, to hear, and to embrace what we, what we have lost and carry it forward as a community. Don't let the monotony become the crutch for a comfortable life. Instead, revise the vision that once was, knowing that God has more in store for you for your life. Don't allow fear to shift your focus from the vision that God has given you for your life. Instead, lean into faith and trust as your foundations in, in decision-making, believing that God has been and will always be faithful. And don't let your impatience become more important than the promise that was given. Make new habits of learning to wait on God and watch your life flourish with a peace that makes no sense at all in all the new spaces that God begins to lead you. When things don't go to plan, the spark for life and so many of us is put out. That vision gets lost. And this year may have had moments of loss. But as we begin this fall, don't just aim for survival, but dream again. Believe again, hope again, and ask again, God, would you reveal to me the vision for this next season of my life? Give me a word, give me a phrase, give me a friend, give me a promise. Ask God to be with you in the midst of your current loss, your current grief, and watch how God begins to make all things new. Saul, he didn't handle the loss of vision particularly well. He allowed fear to drive him forward. He, he fell into this rhythm of, of monotony and, and impatience became his priority over the promise that God had given. But what if we didn't allow fear and monotony and impatience to drive our feelings out of that moment of loss? I'm not saying that you have to get it perfectly right. Far from it. Loss and all of the emotions that come with it, whether it's a physical loss, whether it's, it's a vision loss, whether it's a relational loss, wh whatever it is, carries deep set emotions that we must learn from, that we must process through, that we must grieve over. And sometimes that takes time and that's okay. But the invitation that God gives us is that Grab hold of the vision that once was. And even if it's just a reminder of my faithfulness, know that I am with you. Even if it's just a reminder of my faithfulness, don't let go of community around you. Don't isolate yourself, but invite those to come with you in the fight. If you're looking for a vision for this upcoming fall, I would invite you this week. Would you take a moment every single day and would you just pray? Father, would you reveal to me where I should be focusing my attention for this next season? Would you reveal to me a word, like I said, a phrase, maybe a friend? How can I discover your heart for myself, for the people around me for this next season? Just ask God. 
Just, just come to him in a word of prayer each morning. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to take hours on end, but just a committed, intentional time saying, God, I come to you knowing that you have the best intentions for my life. That you're going to lead me and guide me. And even in this season of loss, you're going to make things new. Even though I've lost it, it doesn't mean it's forever gone. It means that I can just come to you, that I need to come to you, and you're going to reveal what newness can look like in my story. So I'm going to pray for you this morning. We're going to deal with some, some heavier areas of loss in the weeks to come, but I wanted us to start from this place. What's this vision that maybe was lost in this last season that God is reviving, resurrecting in you right now? And how can you be part of the resurrection of vision in someone else around you? How can you encourage? How can you speak life? How can you pray and partner with them so that they can also believe again that God has not left them or forsaken them, but is with them in their struggle and is going to provide the vision that they need to see the hope for tomorrow and move forward into it. So would you join me in prayer this morning? Father, we give you thanks that you lead us and that you guide us. That when we look at the life of of King Saul, when all the circumstances seem to be perfectly in place for success, how, how detrimental and how heartbreaking it is to see when vision is lost in our life. That when fear drives us, when impatience and monotony become our narrative, Father, it can just overwhelm our our hearts. And and I know for so many of us, myself included, that this season has felt all three take its turns to take jabs at us. And I just pray right now that you would, first of all, just give us grace to, to show for ourselves and for others. That loss might not might have happened, loss all around us, within us, and even just the idea of loss of vision, that we've let go of the vision that you gave us at the beginning of the year. Father, thank you that your grace is more than enough, that you that you lead us and you guide us and you, you shape us and you don't ever give up on us. I pray that for everyone who's listening right now that feels as if they have let go of the vision, that it feels too far, far gone, it feels too late, that you would just revive that hope inside of them, that you place that joy in them again, and that you clarify and focus the vision as they step into this upcoming fall season. Thank you that you are giving new vision to those in our church right now, to those in the the community that are are leaning in. Father, I just pray that you would clarify and bring focus in a way that we so desperately need. Flood our homes with this incredible sense of peace and joy that could only come from you. Let us just discover your goodness and trust in you and have faith and trust in you to to, to have this trust that this revision is coming and learn to wait upon your word, to create space in our every day to listen to all that you're leading us towards. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. I pray that you would just build us up, spark conversation, lead us forward. May your kingdom come, may your will be done. Comfort us as well in this season. In your name we pray. Amen.
Awesome. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope that it has been a blessing to you. And I hope that you get an opportunity this week to consider what the idea of the loss of vision can look like in your own life and how you can recapture it and, and listen to what that vision is that God is leading you towards. Um, I hope that we have an opportunity to see you again soon. And that I have a few different announcements of key dates that we are excited about here at City Collector. First off, in uh, as part of our annual birthday celebration. We love to find opportunities to love on our neighbor. So this week there's going to be two opportunities to partner with great organizations, one at HD Stafford and one with New Hope. Uh, organizations that we have the privilege of partnering with financially throughout the year, but also to now serve with them is a great opportunity for us to continue to be the church in a really physical and tangible way. So if you get an opportunity to Pause in the middle of the day, I would invite you to go to citycollective.com, click the button Love Week, and that will take you to the two different events and see if there is an opportunity for you to jump in with us um, during this uh, upcoming week. So that's going to be great. Then on Sunday is our next round of hubs. Registration is open for that. Spots are limited. So make sure that you sign up for the next round of hubs. We had hubs happening today and I know that, that they are going fantastically. Finally, on the 27th, as we mentioned, we are celebrating our second birthday and we are gathering uh, for an evening service, and not just one evening service, but two evening services at Jericho Ridge Community Church. We just wanted to make sure that there was enough space for everyone to come and be part of it. So there's going to be some great things. I, there, there's there's going to be a food truck, and there's going to be some space outside for people to, to come and hang out, but we need you to register. There's going to be 50 spots available in each service, and so we would ask that you would do the same thing like I've already mentioned. Go to citycollective.com, click the button uh, that will indicate the evening service that will be taking place so on the 27th they'll be happening at 5 and 6 20 I think is the second service and so um, there'll be some great opportunities for you to come and be part of it to celebrate to, to reconnect to worship together and to continue this series that we're talking about around uh, ravens and roses there's going to be some uh, heavier material in the weeks to come as we navigate this area of loss but I would encourage you that this week Consider what loss of vision has looked like for you and how God is inviting you to discover again. Now, I believe that covers it. Oh, one more thing. There is uh, a priority for us here at City Collective, and that is generosity. And if you are part of our church family here, I would invite you to partner with us financially, and you can do so by going to citycollective.com slash give. Really simple and one of the great ways that we get to continue to stay connected as the church. Um, if you feel comfortable, I'm just going to end in a benediction and you can extend your hands with me as we step forward into the rest of our Sunday. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May you discover vision and new this week that can come from God and shift our hope into tomorrow. Love God. Love people. Be the church. Have an amazing week, City Collective. We love you. We'll see you soon.